With me here in the studio, we have Dr. Lisa Coleman, who is the Senior Vice President for Global Inclusion, Diversity, and Strategic Innovation at New York University. And I must say that uh, you were really, I think, close colleagues with some of my very nearest and dearest at, at Harvard, also working on diversity and inclusion. And there's an uphill battle in this space. And thank you so much for, for being with us here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. So a lot of the work that you are doing is really about creating ecosystems Yes. to think about diversity and inclusion. And I think a lot of us take those concepts for granted. So before we get into it, I'd love to know, how do you define diversity? Yes, well, I'd like to borrow from my um, former colleague, Verna Myers, who's done a TED Talk, and she was recently appointed at Netflix. So the way we talk about diversity is really about demography. So diversity is defined, um, Verna talks about a dance, and so she talks about how one has a number of people at a dance, right? And I went to single sex schools, and so for those of us who went to single sex schools, when you have a dance, the boys stand on one side of the room <laughs> and the girls stand on another side of the room. And so you have diversity in the room, but no one's really talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Inclusion is when actually people begin to dance together, and that's what Verna Meyer says. My addition is are that then belonging is really then when you're able to contribute to the music or to the playlist, and you actually feel like you belong enough that you could, are able to do that and or make fun of the music that you don't like. And then, of course, equity mm -hmm. is about the um, equitable distribution of resources. So we like to think about diversity, inclusion, belonging, and equity across that landscape. I love your definition of that, because I think oftentimes we feel like having people in the room is enough. That's right. And a lot of the conversations that we've been part of with the Global People Summit talk about people saying, I'm there, I have a seat, but I don't have a voice. And I think for far too often, we tokenize this idea of engagement. It's you have your token That's person right. in the room, and that is, the, that is not the same thing as, as inclusion. And so I, I appreciate you for saying that. Now, I'd love to know, increasingly there's talk about the business incentive yes. of diversity and inclusion. I know, you know it went from being an activist -y thing to now thinking about there's actual incentive financially for companies and for in institutions to be more inclusive. Tell us about that. That's absolutely right. There is a huge business case and a lot of scientific research that demonstrates that diversity, and inclusion, belonging, and equity efforts and, and looking at access is really important. And what we know is that it, it benefits not only learning outcomes because, of course, there's cognitive and neurodiversity. It expands the ways in which we think. And there was a, a great article in Scientific American, and I think it was uh, October 1st, 2012, by Catherine Phillips out of Columbia University, and really where she described how the how when we gain information one of the things that we have to do is decipher that information and so one of the things that's really great about diversity is that it brings us also informational diversity it brings us diversity when people come into the room from different backgrounds different um, geographical regions different ways of being they bring with that with them different information and that information adds to the ways in which then we can learn from each other and learn to actually um, build capacity together and that that is what builds better products, better information systems, better data, better everything. But a lot of that includes also being able to be accepting to begin with. Yes, absolutely. And oftentimes that's the biggest barrier is how do you get to that place? So I'd love to ask you to share with our audience, how do you develop that empathy to actually yes understand someone's perspective. Well, you know, there's this um, anecdote and, and sort of this old adage, right, that if we know someone who's different, if we encounter someone or if we engage someone, then it expands our horizon. So I think one of the things that we can do is really get to know someone who's different than ourselves. Really sit and listen and hear the, what those differences are like. And that, will ex that expands our horizons tremendously. We know this from one of the great things that we know about higher education is people do things like they have their study abroad year. Mm -hmm. Right, and this is all. This has been a really um, important part of higher education in terms of expanding people's imaginations. And at NYU, we have a global networked university, and part of that is because what we know is when you go outside of your comfort zone, you actually expand your learning, and it expands your ability to uh, uh, empathize, have compassion, and really greet one another with a kind of respect and overarching um, um, kind of. Uh, beyond that sort of tolerance to acceptance way that we should be um, engaging with one another. That's, that's amazing. And I think uh, a lot of times people lose, lose hope when they feel like they're rejected. And I'd love if you could share with our audience, how do you overcome feelings of rejection? I know a lot of young people in this country and other countries are struggling. Obviously, we heard earlier today also that mental health is on the rise. Mm -hmm. The campaign we just heard, Billion Acts of Love, just before this segment, 
how do you deal with when you feel so othered and how do you overcome that yourself mm -hmm. but then also reconcile with your community? Yes, I, I think it's really important to develop good networks and to have good support networks. I can't emphasize that enough. And what we know about um, people who are feeling isolated and that once you reach what we call critical mass, that helps with isolation. So in terms of diversity and inclusion, equity, belonging, and access, what we know, for instance, from research is that three women on a board re uh, means critical mass. It a mm -hmm. actually mediates a lot of that isolation, allows people to feel like they have a network where they can move forward and actually act and do something that might be meaningful and have impact. So really, get those two people who are around you and then move forward and develop that network. And all change starts small. That's and, exactly and, right. And builds momentum. And it's really, I think the last uh, thing that I'll really want to get into is allyship. Yes. I think we oftentimes take these causes and own them as communities, but the biggest change often comes when you're able to kind of bring others that don't look like you, talk like you, sound like you, into your conversation to fight with you and by your side and oftentimes from behind you to propel you forward. Right. How does our audience learn to build allyships? How can they find people to stand behind them and, and their thoughts? Yes, well I think this is one great example of really um, you are, you're bringing people together here today to really have a conversation. So I think engage in the conversations that are available. Really, um, if we think about our companies, our, our, our higher education institutions, there are lots of opportunities to get involved. So the first thing is get involved in something that you feel passionate about. And then the second, of course, I've started, sort of already um, foreshadowed, listen. Listen to someone and listen to things that may not feel as comfortable for you or maybe outside of something that you know and really mm -hmm. listen and learn. I think curiosity is one of those things that can lead us to great, as I said before, sort of greater empathy, greater compassion and greater understanding. And then lastly, do one small act, whether it's a mm -hmm. week, per week, per month, per year, for someone you disagree with. I someone you really, really find, you think, I don't know if I even really like that person so much. Do one small act of kindness and see how what that happens and learn from that. That's a very beautiful message. And actually, we had a few uh, questions here. And Maddie um, Halverson, I hope that answered your question as to how do you actually start to begin uh, to create change in your community. So have a conversation. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank and you so much. We hope to stay in touch. And thanks to NYU for all your amazing engagement and support online. Your students have been fantastic. <laughs> uh, we look forward to continuing to work with your thank institution. You so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you for being with us.